Up until now in the series I've considered the efficient frontier and a number of associated tools and techniques, but only for two assets. This of course is necessary to explain the concepts and to aid learning, but now it's time to extend beyond just two assets and get a bit more real world. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. As a trader, you'll benefit from cost effective market access via multiple trading platforms and APIs. These enable trading and investing in any US stock over 60 of the most liquid futures contracts, FX and CFDs. You can even diversify your portfolio by buying and selling other traders' strategies as investable assets themselves. So, if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link top right now or find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. Today, I'll build on everything we've done so far in Excel and extend this to three assets. Let's make a start. So as you can see, I've used the same two stocks that I used previously when we went through this process for just two assets, and that's Cisco Systems and Pfizer. But now I've added an additional one for American Express, and I've got the same date range here, so we're going to be performing our calculations based on a year's worth of data. And here, as you can see, I've just calculated the daily returns again for American Express, based on the formula that you can see. So let's go down to the bottom of the table here where we'll perform our calculations. And I've already got the formulas here that we used for Pfizer and Cisco for the standard deviation and expected return. And so I'm simply going to copy those across to Amex. And if you want more information about how those calculations are performed, then I suggest you watch the previous videos for the two asset equivalent. Now, let's just bring up the formula that we've looked at previously when we've considered the theory behind this. And this is the formula to calculate the portfolio standard deviation for a three asset portfolio. And again, for more information on this, refer to those previous episodes. But the reason I've brought this up at this stage is because there's a couple more metrics that we need which are the metrics of the correlation coefficient between the other two combinations of stocks. So Cisco and Amex and Pfizer and Amex. And we already have the correlation coefficient here from the previous example between Cisco and Pfizer. So for these, I just use the standard inbuilt correlation function and perform that on the relevant daily return values, as you can see here. So with those additional metrics in place, we now have all of the values we need in order to perform this apart from the weightings. And for that, I've already prepared a template, as you can see here. This provides us with every combination of weightings between these three different assets in increments of 5%. So going from 100% in Amex, as you see here, with zero in the other two, all the way down to the bottom here, where we have 100% in Cisco and zero in the other two. So let's now use this formula in order to populate the portfolio standard deviations for each of these combinations. Now, to save some time here, I've already put this equation together and you can see that this exactly mimics what we have in the formula here. And then we can simply click on the corner to calculate the standard deviations for all of the other portfolio constructions. Now, the expected return formula is a lot simpler, and that is simply the weight of the first asset multiplied by the daily expected return. And I'm just going to lock that in so that when we drag our values down, it's always using this value on the left here. And then we add the weight of Pfizer in this case, multiplied by the daily return of Pfizer. Again, lock that in. And finally, the same for American Express. You can now just 
transfer that all the way down. Always worth just clicking on one of the other values just to make sure it definitely is using the values that you requested, which in this case it is. And with these two sets of values now in place, we have everything we need to be able to chart this and get an idea of what the efficient frontier looks like. So I'm just going to go all the way to the bottom here and and we'll show that as a scatter chart. Now there's an interesting difference here between what we saw for two assets and what we see for three because we've got here what is effectively another degree of freedom as we're allowed to change the weightings now of three assets. It almost has a 3D surface look and feel to it. So it looks like this surface is coming and going around the back here. And that's because we have this additional degree of freedom introduced with the third asset. Now, because of this, the calculation of things like the optimal portfolio and also the global minimum variance portfolio is slightly more complex, but it's still something that's easily achievable in Excel. And indeed, that's going to form the basis of the next two episodes. So in episode 29, I'll be looking at identifying that minimum risk portfolio, sometimes called the global minimum variance portfolio, for this data that we've just produced in Excel. And then in the following episode, we'll do likewise for the optimal portfolio. And by optimal here, I mean what is effectively the best return versus risk ratio. So now that brings us to the end of today's episode. And as always, it's extremely appreciated if you've got any value at all from this that you give me a like. But now, until next time, trade safe.